Good evening and welcome to Chasing the Facts. I'm your host Sam Chase and with us for this show is Pat Wojcic who is uh, presently on the Chelmsford Select Board and Pat is running for re-election. Uh, for those folks who are watching our town election is, uh, correct me Pat if I'm wrong, I think it's April 5th. That's is correct. that correct? So we were having a town election on April 5th and it is just a town election, town-wide offices, so we have select board, we have school committee, uh, we have all of the uh, town meeting rep seats that are up this time because of the redistricting. So that's the election date, and Pat is an incumbent running for re-election. So Pat, uh, why don't you take just a minute and give us a little bit of a biographical sketch, and then we'll get into the discussion. Okay, well, I have been on the select board, as you mentioned, for about 13 years now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I, before that, I was a, a member of the Board of Library Trustees, and uh, I've been a town meeting rep for not the entire time that we've had that, that form of government, but I've been you know, in and out pretty, pretty much the, you know, the majority of the years that we've had that form of government. Um, I've always been informed and have followed local politics and you know, local government. Um, I couldn't name every, every member of the select board from, from when uh, you know, that, I, that I've been in town, but um, I probably know or have heard of most of them. Um, and, and I think that's, that's uh, you know, important when you want to be on a board like this to, to kind of have a sense for what the different boards do and who's on them and what their um, ideologies are and their, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how, what, how they want, how they see the, the uh, town government uh, running. So that's what I've been trying to do. So you've, you've come up really the, what we would probably call the traditional way before you your first attempt at town office was not to run for the select board. It was to do some, take some preliminary steps. And, uh, and, you know, recently we haven't seen that, but, uh, you know, it used to be that you followed some sort of a path. Usually you start out as a town meeting rep, as you did, and then maybe you serve on one or two other boards uh, that, that are not, uh, of, of, that are of lesser, um, Degree, if, if mm -hmm. that's the right word, sure. and you gain an understanding of how the uh, of how the town works. So that's the background you've had. I'm going to mention one thing you didn't because I think it's important, and I greatly respect uh, your veteran service, uh, Pat. Oh, thank you. Uh, was it six years active? Uh, no, um, I I went through ROTC at UMass Amherst, and you were the first. First woman in Massachusetts. First woman in Massachusetts to have done that. That's quite an accomplishment. And you, so you went in the Air Force as an officer. That's correct. And served uh, a number of years of active duty. And I think uh, you and Mark are the veterans on the That's on, right. on the board now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I greatly respect your service and thank you very much uh, for, for that. Um, <clears throat> So uh, let me ask you this, and it, it just so happens I remember when Pat was elected because I happened to be serving on the select board at the time, and right. Pat was uh, elected in 2007. That's right. You know, for the first time. So um, let me just ask you really quickly, uh, were you surprised after you got on the board? Did it, did it uh, coincide with what you were expecting? Uh, uh, or were you thrown a little bit off base your first year, year and a half on the board? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you, how you found that experience being elected for the first time? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I was I was pleased to to be elected. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> um, but I I don't think I really was surprised. I mean, maybe in a in a you know a, a minor way. But um, like I said, I I had followed the you know mm -hmm. local um, political scene. Um, I'd gone to a lot of uh, select board meetings. Um, I even went sometimes, you probably remember, I would go sometimes to work sessions with which in those days were not televised. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of get a, an idea of, of how things worked and how the dynamics worked between the members of the board. So when I got on, I, I realized that not everybody's going to have the same idea about everything, but uh, you know, we obviously talked, you know, we were civil with each other. Mm -hmm. We um, listened to the ideas everybody had, and you know, came to a consensus, and that's how the the board worked. 
And I think it is critical to, I think it's even more important to, to go to a meeting in person than it is to watch it on TV. I mean, I'd watched it on TV for years before I started yes. going in person to the meetings because you pick up on different things, you know, different um, facial gestures and, and things like that that the different board members have. Um, so I, I, I would say that I was, I was not surprised and I really um, took to it, I guess, better than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. um, I found that I really enjoyed municipal government. Uh, in fact, I've I've done so, you know, uh, with a couple surrounding communities. I've I worked in various capacities in, in surrounding communities. Well, talk a little bit about your um, experience with the the, the greater uh, uh, government organization, NEMCOG. NEMCOG. <coughs> I've been on NEMCOG since 2007. Mm -hmm. um, I I happened my uh, one of my brothers ex-brother-in-law happened to be the executive director of NEMCOG in 2007, okay. so I had a little bit of knowledge when, uh, when, I, when I went there. And just for the audience, NEMCOG is Northern Middlesex Council of Governments, and what are the towns that are uh, contained in that consortium? Uh, there's the city of Lowell and then the towns of Dracut, Tewksbury, Tingsboro, Chelmsford, uh, Pepperell, Dunstable, Vilrica, is, yeah, is that. And the mission is generally what? what? Re regional planning. Regional planning, okay, which I wish we could do more of, but that's yeah. the way <laughs> I, I wish we could do more than just regional planning. Yes. You know, we could, because we do have, they also um, uh, um, have a, uh, a regional stormwater collaborative mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, that, that they have formed since the, you know, we've had to implement stormwater regulations everywhere. But yeah, I mean, it's, I, that's one of my favorite um, uh, agencies to be on because it because it is regional get to hear how different communities are handling different issues that come up so you don't have to reinvent the wheel that is so important it, it is so important it is you, like you said I you know I wish we could do more things yes. that way rather than have every community do their own do their own thing mm -hmm. um, so you, you certainly probably could save uh, just as an example you could probably save a lot on on capital costs for for certain high priced mm -hmm pieces of equipment that a town might use four or five times a year. Right. Maybe you could share that. That's right. All right, that kind of thing. But that's not the way we think in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, yeah. and so that, I think, but the fact that you, you have been involved in that, I think benefits, as you said, it benefits the town greatly because you can bring back uh, some perspective. Mm -hmm. Whether or not people want to listen to it, that's another thing, but at least it's available uh, mm -hmm. for people. So, and, and one thing I'd like to mention as far as NEMCOG too, um, there's another organization that's kind of a subgroup of NEMCOG which is called the Northern Middlesex Metropolitan Planning Organization. Mm -hmm. And it, this organization is the one that, um, that programs federal transportation funds mm. every year. Uh, and, and that's so critical. Um, and I'm the NEMCOG representative on, on that, uh, that organization, and we have seen uh, the benefit of that, I think, quite a bit mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in Chelmsford since I've, since I've been a member. The first uh, project that I remember doing was over at Parkhurst Road and Smith Street, where we kind of reconfigured that intersection to make it a lot safer. Mm -hmm. And since then... Oh, know, yeah, big improvement. Yeah. Big improvement. Uh, others that, that, I've been, that have come, you know, come along since then... Uh, the bridge over 495 on um, on uh, Pine Hill Road. Yes. Um, the the uh, ongoing construction um, at Riverneck Road and and Berica Road in front of the Workers Credit Union, mm -hmm. which is close to completion, and at Triangle Service Station yes. at Boston Road and Concord Road. Those are just a couple, you know, a few that have have come along since I've been on there. And I think it is important to take advantage of that f those federal funds. Yes. If you know anybody, that, any community that can get a hold of those and have them benefit your community, I think it's it's invaluable. It's 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 funds you don't need to take out of the you know your tax base. Correct. You know? And anybody who listens to the town manager when he talks about the budget and the fi and or watches the FinCon meetings understands that what you said is is, is critical. Mm -hmm. We need to grab everything that we can get, quite frankly, because the state isn't yeah. really helping us out that much. Right. You Not know? near so, enough. Yeah. Right. Well, that's I think that's all uh, very good experience, and it's a good uh, background for any person to bring to, to the select board. So let me ask you why, and I think you've probably just answered the question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, why, why do you want another term on the board? Well, I, I, I think I bring, bring some of that institutional knowledge and mm -hmm. the, um, you know, being on these, uh, like you say, the regional, 
the regional boards and, and mm -hmm. agencies. Um, and, and some of those, it takes a while to get used to them, get used to the terminology, I'd say especially the MPO. Uh, it's, it's chaired by a, a representative from um, MassDOT, and sometimes they start throwing around um, the acronyms, the acronyms yeah. that you mm -hmm. have no idea what they're talking about, like, you know, CMAQ funds, which is um, congestion mitigation and air quality. I mean, who would ever think of that? Not but, me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it takes a while to, you know, kind of get comfortable mm. in, in, in being on those, on those boards and, and committees. And it's even as far as the, um, the select board itself, I, I think it takes a while for people to get comfortable, it, especially in, you know, recently that we've had um, members that have not, like you say, gone through the traditional mm -hmm. way to get to the, to the select board, and sometimes they'll be, they'll be sitting at that table and not really know. Well, exactly. the learning curve is, is, is longer. I mean, if, yes, you know, absolutely. let's say, and I'll, I'll just use myself as an example. Uh, I had six years on the finance committee mm -hmm. before I got on the board. Now, I happen to think that FinCom is probably one of the better committees for training, right. okay? Because agree. if you sit on the finance committee, you learn how the town operates from a financial perspective because you look at everybody's budget, mm -hmm. you know? And, but even having that experience when I got on the board, um, I really kept my mouth shut for a while because uh, I, I realized that even though I had that experience and I was the liaison to the, to the board and I attended almost all the board meetings, there was still an awful lot I didn't know, mm -hmm. all right? But I think my learning curve was probably shorter than, as you say, somebody who had absolutely no exposure mm -hmm. coming on. So see, you're right, I think that is very important. And, and, and I think that especially <clears throat> shows up um, because Right after the first meeting, the first regular meeting after the election, the board typically begins their recommendations for town meeting yes. articles. Yes. So you have to know what you what you you know how you want to mm. um, whether to endorse those or not. So I, I, you know I think if anybody who is going to you know even run for the select board, they should be absolutely certain that they have familiarize themselves with the, yes. the town meeting warrant so that when they're asked to, to vote whether to, mm -hmm. you know, support that, that article, they, they have a good reason and they know which way they want to go. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good if, if, if it, the candidate at least has been a town meeting rep because mm -hmm. then, then they would have had some exposure uh, to that. But, I mean, not to say that people should be disparaged or or denigrated for not having that experience. And I, I don't mean mm -hmm. to say that, but I, it's just better if you have more experience. I mean, right. I just think that's basic logic, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that's, that's good. Now, I know you and I have talked about this in the past because I know you, you're, you're very interested in, in process and structure and everything, and I think that's important, you know, to have somebody on the board that has that perspective. Um, Under our charter, as you know, uh, it's pretty clear um, what the select board's role is as distinct from the town manager's role. So would you like to expound on that a little bit? Or uh, maybe I can throw you another question. Would that be easier? Um, let me set it up a little bit. Um, under our structure, the select board operates more in a board of directors uh, perspective as opposed to a direct operational perspective and that those functions right. are reserved to the town manager and it does sometimes uh, create uh, some conflict mm -hmm. and this isn't anything that's new I mean I've, I've seen this going back many 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 years okay that sometimes those lines are blurred and they're not clear so could you expand a little bit, maybe give us your philosophy. How do you feel? Do you think this is a good structure for Chelmsford? Are there things that could be done differently? That kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it works well uh, mm -hmm. for Chelmsford. Um, our town manager is a professional, unlike you know some communities, they hire city and town managers that maybe get there more because of their politics than because of their knowledge. Really? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> what a shock. We won't give any examples. <laughs> no, today. let's not let's not talk about that. <laughs> yes. Um, and and then the, the select board is intended to be primarily a policy making mm -hmm. uh, organization and licensing. You know, that's a, uh, yes. I, I would say those are the two primary goals, you know, primary um, responsibilities and authorities of the select board. Um, and, I mean, obviously there's other things too, I mean, we, um, you know, if you watch our, our meetings, you see that we, 
um, listen to reports from the different uh, departments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh, approve appointments, and some appointments we make, the, the board has direct authority to make those, those appointments to some uh, committees. There's, you know, per the charter, there's a limited number of um, uh, appointments and hirings that the board does, one being a town manager and a town accountant and town council. So those are important appointments, and then, you know, some other right, policy making. Right. Um, boards and committees we also appoint. That was expanded uh, back in 2006 uh, because before then and th there were charter changes. The, the board had no authority at all to appoint any committees, even ad hoc study committees. Right. If, you wanted a, if you wanted to study tax classification, you had to go to the town manager and have him appoint the committees. Right. And we made the change uh, back uh, in, in 2006 or seven. actually, we made the change to add, to give the selectmen the ability to appoint ad hoc committees. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just didn't make any sense. And I, I was on the select board at the time. It made no sense at all to me that we had to go to the town manager and ask him to do that for right. us if it was something we wanted done directly, you know, just from an advisory standpoint, we, we couldn't appoint, appoint statutory committees, obviously, mm -hmm. okay? So, uh, so I think that's that's a, that's a good example. So, um, now as far as the uh, relationship that uh, the, uh, between the board and the manager, do um, you think that's pretty much worked out? How, how has that worked out in your uh, perspective over the last several years? I mean, I, I think it, it works okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I find the town manager very responsive to mm -hmm. requests that, that you know, constituents bring to me and then I bring to him. Um, I, I think sometimes it, it does, like you say, come close to the, to the line going, you know, blurring the lines mm -hmm. one way or another. But generally, we seem to work that out mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to mutually beneficially, which is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, maybe there are some things that, that still come a little bit too close to crossing the line, but um, uh, I think you're always going to have that because people interpret what the charter says and what policies say a little bit differently. Sure. Depending on what their background is and, and what they want to see happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, currently, of course, uh, Paul's been with the town, I think, 15 years. Is that right? A little, maybe a little more than maybe 15 he, years. Yeah, he started at the end of 06. 06, that's right. So he's been here, that, that, and he's obviously served under many different boards. Mm -hmm. And he's always had a, uh, an employment contract, and presently he's working without a contract. That's so correct. Is there any, uh, do you see that uh, that situation will resolve itself anytime soon? or? Um, I, I'm unsure on that. I, I, mm -hmm. I wish it would. I mean, I, I think Paul deserves a contract. Like you say, he's always had one mm -hmm. up until the last year and a half or so. Um, I, I would like to see him stay here until he, until he makes a decision to mm -hmm. retire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unless that's going to be 20 years from now, but I don't think that's... No, the I don't case. think so. <laughs> so, um, I mean, as far as if anything will happen on that in the, in the near, f near term, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not the chair, so I don't, I don't um, schedule meetings. Right, right. So you'd have to ask somebody else that Okay, question. all right, that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So um, how do you, what do you see uh, looking forward um, as the biggest issues that are facing the town from a management and or budgetary perspective? <clears throat> Uh, well, at our at our last meeting, we we saw we heard a report about the uh, status of all the streets in town, mm -hmm. and we have quite a few that are uh, deteriorating and and almost in the unacceptable range. I could guess you could say not too many, but you know, obviously every every year we get more, and we don't have nearly sufficient funds in order to maintain those mm -hmm. streets. Uh, we try to. Um, do as many as possible. The state day. hasn't helped us. No, state has not helped us. Mm -hmm. uh, that we've been flat fund, you know, we're funded on that for since you know for over 12 years now. Um, last year we did get a few extra dollars, and then this year I think the governor is is maybe going to increase those those funds a little bit more. But yeah, it's it's not near what we need, um, and everybody thinks that their own street is the worst one in town and needs to have the most attention paid to it. Yeah, it's like when it snows, everybody 
wants their street plowed by 7 o'clock in the right. morning. They all want to be first, yeah. So that's not possible, folks. Yeah, it isn't. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I tell people yeah. sometimes if we had unlimited resources, we obviously... We had a plow at, every, at the end of every street, maybe we could do that, yeah, but, but it doesn't work that way, no, unfortunately. It, it, it yeah. definitely doesn't, doesn't. Yeah. So we have, we have, you know, those issues as far as, uh, you know, resources. And then, as you mentioned, PFAS, um, that's a, an issue that's becoming more prevalent everywhere. Um, you know, f our water districts are impacted by that. And because of that, I think the town is impacted by mm -hmm. that because we have to be sure that we're not contributing to uh, some of the PFAS of contamination to, on the water supply. Of course, and, and you know, that discussion, uh, you know, you, you mentioned PFAS, that discussion has been ongoing for quite some time, mm -hmm. and it's, it's good. I'm glad that's being discussed, and at the level it's being discussed. The unfortunate thing is, if you didn't know anything about the issue at all, and the only information you got was watching some of the meetings on TV, you could very easily get the impression that this is only a Chelmsford problem. You could get that impression, mm. okay? Yeah, and could. I think, you know, it's important when we do talk about these things. If it is a Chelmsford issue, whatever it is, then, then that should be stated, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's a Chelmsford problem. But if it's an issue like PFAS, I think, you know, a, a, an occasional disclaimer every once in a while would be good to, to, to just remind people, look, this is, this is a statewide, it's not even, it's national. Oh, yeah, okay? it's probably worldwide. And it's, wor it's really, it is worldwide. Mm -hmm. But at least within the context here, we can say it's, it's really, you know, Massachusetts is really focused on this issue. It isn't just Chelmsford. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good, good to know that. Mm -hmm. so, but it is, uh, that's a good example of, of something that is really a problem. And I commend the select board and the town manager and the town administration generally for recognizing that that is something that we, as you say, we have to try to do whatever we can, right. even right. if it's yeah. little, <laughs> okay, right. yeah. to, to, to help with that situation, yeah. at least not make it worse. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, another infrastructure yeah. issue that we're dealing with is, is the town sewer. I mean, right now we yes. have a moratorium. Uh, in the short term, we're, we're trying to come up with some way to increase capacity, but short of that, you know, every new development, every new residence, has to have mm -hmm. their own their own septic or, or so that right now that would even apply if we were just building one house that that's resident would would not would be told you have to put in a septic system that's correct okay all right yeah I mean and that's kind of impacted the board of health somewhat because yeah. it's been years since they've had to go out and do you know testing oh yes and stuff like yes like absolutely that for, for that so I think right now they're contracting all that. Uh, yeah. all that, that out. And the, and the rules are a lot tighter than they were back in the days when they had to do that because right. we have Title V and things like that now, so mm -hmm. that's tough. So uh, from a budgetary standpoint, um, I mean, that's always, we always talk about the same things every year. Mm. There's never enough money right. to do everything that everybody would like to have done, so you have to make choices. Uh, getting back to your example for the street issue, mm -hmm. So I, if I remember, I did watch the presentation. Christina Papadopoulos did an excellent job, very, very clear. Mm -hmm. If you had no knowledge at all, you, you could watch that presentation and get a pretty good understanding of, of the issue, I mm -hmm. think. So I think the takeaway number was $39 million to bring everything up to whatever the spec should be right. reasonably. Mm -hmm. So that isn't going to happen. No, and right now <laughs> we're lucky to get a million and a half, and it's right. going to be a little bit lower than that. Right. So uh, what are the alternatives? So if the state doesn't come forward and give us any more, which it doesn't, you know, you can't count on it. It's been, as Pat said, it's been level funded for 10 years, which really means it's been decreased because of the effects of inflation. Mm -hmm. So your, your dollar 10 years ago is probably worth about 60 cents today. So that's, uh, you know. And, and with, with yeah. road construction, maybe even less than that. Oh, yeah. Especially now. Yeah, the inflation in that sector is probably worse yes. than, than it is just generally. That's, yeah. that's a good point. So what, what are the alternatives? So if the town decides they want to fund that, where are they going to get the money from? That's a good question. Yep. I mean, you know, we, we don't we don't get much help from the state and even less yep. from from the federal. You know, that's why I think this, the MPO is is so critical because mm -hmm. when we get those those funds, when going we back have, to your regional yeah, discussion, right? Yeah. Then at least the areas where th that construction mm -hmm. is going on, they do um, improve the the road, like you know North Road over 495. I think that was mm -hmm. that was greatly enhanced. 
few years ago when, when that was put in that new street, you know, new traffic light and, you know, that's... that's and I think that's important because I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, Pat, I, I consider myself reasonably plugged in, but I, I'm not sure I was aware to the extent that that was a, a, any kind of a regional effort. I mean, I think I just learned something from you now. Yeah, and and I, I think that's, that's important for people to understand and why that perspective is, is, is so important. So, of course, everybody hates paying taxes mm -hmm. at any level. That's right. I don't care whether it's income or property, but the property tax seems to trigger a degree of uh, concern with people. <laughs> huh. we'll, just, yeah. we'll just say that. Uh, so... Um, I mean, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I know the board put in uh, the split tax rate four years ago, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that your taxes aren't going to go up every year because they are. Right, they are. Pretty much. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think the real estate tax, in my mind, is one of the most regressive taxes because sure. it doesn't matter how much, how much income you have, your property taxes are still going to go up, Correct. like you said. Um, I, a few years ago, I it was probably close to 10 years ago. Now, I remember, we had local option taxes that we had the, mm -hmm. the option, as it, the the name implies, to implement um, taxes locally. Is that but, when we got our portion of the meals tax? Correct. That's when that and, happened. And the yeah. and the hotel tax. Right. Yes. Um, I, I think that was important. You know, there were people that at that time that said, "Oh, you know, if we implement a." Uh, a meals tax, everybody's going to go to the surrounding communities that Yeah, and I think it. the example given, if I remember in town meeting, was on a $100 uh, meal, uh, it's going to be an extra 75 cents. Exactly, yeah. So and, and if, and you're gonna, if you're going to go to uh, some other area for 75 cents on $100, well, then you must have free gasoline in your car. That's my only comment. Yes, okay, right. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if, it would be nice yeah. if, if we could come up with some more local right. options like that. I don't know what they would be, but, you know, that is one, uh, one suggestion. Um, it can't be an override because an override would not... Not, not in pass. Chelmsford no. at this point. You're right. You're right. right. So your, your general feeling, though, is that the administration does a reasonably good job of, of managing the resources that we do have and making sure that the priorities... I think they do a very good best. job, yeah. <laughs> more yeah. than reasonably good. Yeah. I think if, uh, you know, regardless of how you feel overall, but looking at the uh, town manager's past review, uh, I think everybody gave them high marks on, mm -hmm. on uh, fiscal management mm -hmm. and, and budgetary uh, issues and so forth, so that's good. Um, so, just very quickly, because I, I want to give you a little opportunity at the end to, to speak to the voter, but uh, just if you had to identify one pressing near-term priority, uh, do you have an idea what that might be from your perspective? Um, that's, that's a tough one, because uh, there are so many, as, yes. as, as we've talked about. Uh, some, of the, some of the other things that we're working on in the past year and a half, we've established two new committees, which I think are addressing issues that are important to the town. Okay. The first one being the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion mm -hmm. Committee. Um, I mean, you see, when we go to town meeting, it's, you know, 98 percent white people. Mm -hmm. um, we, even though in the community now, I know we have such a diverse population. It's and changed it's, quite a bit over the last 15 years. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's important that we be inclusive yes. that way. So this committee, I think, is doing an excellent job Good. in trying to bring that to the focus. And then within the past um, six months or so, we created the Clean Energy and Sustainability Committee. Yes. Another item that's, that's going to, I mean, I, I think people don't realize how much climate change has impacted us already. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that from the storms that we have. You can see that in, in the you know, month of February, how the, the temperatures seem to just fluctuate so wildly. We'd have a 60 degree day and then the next day it would be like 22 degrees. I'll take more 60 degree days. Me too, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but it, it, it is, indicative of, of yep. where the climate is going and, and I think so it's... So those are two those are two top priorities so I'm going to give you about uh, 40 seconds to ask the voter for his support. If oh wow. That's it's what already, you'd like to do. I <laughs> already have just 40 seconds left. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Pat Wojcic. I am running for re-election to the Chancellor Select Board. I respectfully ask for one of your two votes on election day on April 5th and I want to remind everybody that you probably have a new um, 
precinct. The precinct lines have all been redrawn. In the not too distant future, you should be getting a postcard in the mail that'll tell you what your new no. precinct number is and where your, your voting location is. So hope to see everybody out on election day and thank you very much for your past support. Good information, thank you for that. I was not aware that they were gonna do a mail. Yeah. That, that's good.